Have you ever looked at the GPU and thought, this one's gonna be a breeze? That's exactly what I thought when I unboxed this MSI Supreme X RTX 3070. It was immaculate, not a scratch, not a speck of dust. It looked like the kind of GPU that just needed a pat on the back to start working again. But what I didn't know was that this repair would test every bit of skills and patience I had. Hi, my name is Fraser and welcome to GPU Solutions. In today's repair story, I take you deep into what I thought was an easy fix, but instead became one of the most technically demanding jobs I've tackled in months. Let me take you through the entire repair journey. The customer's message was simple. The card showed green lines and then no display. That typically points to a faulty memory module, something I've handled dozens of times. When I got the GPU in hand, it honestly looked factory fresh. Not even fingerprint marks. I even noticed a manufacturer's seal still intact, which means no one had ever opened it up not even out of curiosity. Perfect, I thought. A clean card, likely just one bad memory chip. Should be a quick diagnosis, maybe a reball or a swap and done. At least that was the plan. I mounted the GPU on my test bench and ran MATS, that's NVIDIA's memory diagnostics tool. When the test was over, it showed that there were three memory modules that were faulty. A1, A0, and B1. All of them were located on the bottom side of the PCB, right above the PCIe slot. At this point, I understood that something was not right, but I still did not expect what was going to follow next. It could be cracked solder joints or pads under the memory module, and I've seen that before. Let me disassemble and take a look. The teardown was straightforward. Screws out, cooler off, thermal pads removed. The PCB was spotless. Not a sign of corrosion or overheating and no signs of prior work either. I put the GPU board under the microscope and no visible damage that I could see. But just to be sure, I turned on the preheater at 120 degrees Celsius, shielded the GPU core and carefully removed all the three suspected memory modules using the hot air at 420 degrees Celsius. Once I removed, I began inspecting the memory modules. One had a clear broken pad, and that's going to go in the bin. The other two were visually fine, no lifted pads, and everything looked okay, at least so far. Perfect, I thought, I'll just reball these two, replace the broken one, and we are done. But again, reality was just preparing a twist. I cleaned the memory pads on the board, removed the unleaded solder, tinned them with leaded solder and wicked them clean. Everything looked excellent, no damage on any memory pads on the PCB. So I paused and thought, why were three memory chips failing if pads were all intact? Just to be sure, I decided to check connectivity between memory pads and the GPU core. And then I found it. Some of the pads were not connected. That's when the alarm bell started ringing. This wasn't just a memory issue anymore. The problem had migrated under the GPU core. There was only one way to be sure. Remove the GPU core and inspect the pads underneath. So I prepared the board for the GPU removal, mounted it on my rework station and took a deep breath because things were officially no longer easy. Once the core came off, I carefully moved the PCB to my workbench. Initially, I spotted seven broken pads. Not great, but I could work with that. But after cleaning the flux and examining the pad array, I counted them again. And 11. 11 broken pads under the GPU core. This was no longer a quick fix. This was going to be a full pad repair operation. Pad repair isn't for the faint-hearted, especially on the GPU core, where the pitch is just 0.7 millimeters. One slip and you could destroy the entire trace. So I began slowly, one at a time. I exposed the copper trace by gently scraping the solder mask using a grinding pen. 
I then covered the traces with UV masks that were either ground or not connected. I then started to repair the broken pads by installing pad patches. To do that, I first removed one patch and placed it on the board near the broken pad. I applied UV mask in the area of the pad and placed the pad in it and pointed the UV light over it. I waited for the UV mask to dry and then held the pad in place. After the UV mask dried up, I peeled off the excess mask that was on top of the pad so that it could catch the solder later. I then applied flux and hot iron and soldered the pad to the trace so that it makes good contact. I then broke off the excess tail of the pad and then cleaned off the flux with isopropyl alcohol. I applied UV mask to close the contact so that it would not get damaged while repairing other pads. Each pad took time. Each one demanded absolute focus. But one by one, I rebuilt all the seven functional pads and the board was finally ready. Now it's time for the GPU core. I cleaned off the old solder, tinned it with leaded to bring down the melting point of the solder. Wicked it clean and gave it a nice finish. Then, I mounted the core on my reballing jig, applied fresh flux, dropped leaded solder balls using a stencil and reflowed them slowly. When bridges formed, I used angled wick tips to fix them cleanly. After that, I flooded the core with flux and gave it a final heat pass to let all the balls settle properly. The GPU core is now ready. Now back to those memory modules I had set aside earlier. One of the memory module had a broken pad and was unusable. So I started with the second one. I cleaned off the solder. I found that one pad was broken on this module too. And the third one, also the same story. All three memory modules were unusable. At this point, I just smiled to myself. That quick fix? was officially a fantasy. It was now time to put everything back together. I applied flux to the PCB and then applied some flux to the core as well. I then placed and aligned the core on the PCB to make sure everything is right. And I then put it on my rework station. After the installing of the core, I verified every data and command line in diode mode. Every pad was making perfect contact with the GPU core. Then came the new memory chips. I aligned them carefully, preheated the PCB and soldered them at 420 degrees Celsius. Finally, I let the board cool down completely. Before powering it up, I checked the resistance on all major rails like the PEX, 1.8 volts, and memory. All look great. I powered it using my custom build power supply and the idle current was at 1.46 amps. That's exactly what I wanted to see. I then installed the board on the bench and ran mats again and this time it was a pass. Finally, I reassembled the card and ran a full suite of stress tests. I ran firma to check temperatures and power drop and everything looked normal. I then ran superposition and it passed with a solid performance. I ran 3D Mark Nomad and the score was excellent. And then 3D Mark Speedway. This card is solid now. What started as a pristine untouched MSI Supreme X RTX 3070 turned into a 3 memory failure, 11 broken pads and hours of delicate microsurgery. But in the end, it was worth it. The GPU is now running flawlessly and I can finally say repair complete. If this journey kept you watching, give it a thumbs up and share this video with your friends. Don't forget to subscribe as I have a lot more content like this coming your way. If you want to support this channel, consider joining as a member or you can also use the thanks button. Your contribution helped. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye for now. Cheers.